Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the Castle Coombe Manor House in Castle Coombe. And today we're going to be reviewing this beautiful white 991.1 Porsche 911 GT3. So first of all, I'm going to take you through some back history of the Porsche 911 GT3. Then I'm going to take you through a walk around of the specific options on this car. Then we're going to get it out on the road and see how it drives. So the 911 GT3 was introduced for the FIA Series GT3 Race Championships. The first production GT3 was also introduced in 1999 and this was based on the 911 Carrera chassis and body with the engine loosely based on the GT1 Le Mans Racer. Now I'm not going to talk you through every single separation and change between the earliest 911 GT3 and the, and the current model. I'm just going to talk you through the main changes that have occurred um, and the advancements from the first GT3, production GT3, down to the current model GT3. And then we're going to go through the specifications of this particular 991.1 model. To give you an appreciation of the advancement with the GT3 range, the first model 911 GT3 had the model number 996.1. It had 360 brake horsepower and 273 pound-foot of torque. It's not to 62, was 4.8 seconds, and it had a maximum speed of 187 miles per hour. Now the current range 911 GT3 is a 992.1, and this has 503 brake horsepower and 470 pound-foot of torque. The not to 62 is 3.4 seconds and has a maximum speed of 198 miles per hour. As you can see, there's quite a substantial improvement between the beginning 911 GT3 model and the current GT3 model. So you'll hear the word Metzger associated with the Porsche GT product range. Why is that? What does Metzger actually mean? What's the association? For a full detailed appreciation, I'll point you to a video by one of my colleagues, JM on Cars. He goes into great detail about how Hans Metzger was associated with the GT product range. But, and I'll put a link in the comments below. But I'll give you a brief summary overview. So Hans Metzger actually designed the early air-cooled engines. So he's not just associated with the water-cooled products. He actually designed the early air-cooled engines from the 901 model range up to, of course, the 993 end product range. So that's 34 years of engine and model range development. So Hans Metzger was then moved across to design race cars for the GT race series. Mostly you'll hear his name associated with the GT products from for the air cooled, so from the 996.1 up to the 997.2 GT3 RS 4 litre. That's when the association of Metzger engine changed. Now, what does that actually mean, that association? What it means is that all those engines and the derivatives were all based on the original template, the original blueprint, if you like, that was developed by Hans Metzger. In effect, they're a watered down version of the race tuned versions, uh, whereby they have things like titanium com rods, hardened crankshafts and lightened pistons. That allows these engines to be a lot more performant than the standard production versions and it allows them to do things like rev from the early 996.1 engine of 7,800 redline up to the now later models, which is 9,000 RPM, which is what this 991.1 revs to and of course what the latest 992.1 revs to as well. So key substantial changes were introduced in the GT3 range as it advanced through from the 996 model up to the 992 model that we currently have at the moment in production. Things such as the addition of carbon ceramic brakes, the addition of rear wheel steering which started with the 991 model which is this model and also electric steering which again was introduced with this model. In addition to that PDK dual clutch system was introduced for the, for the 911 GT3. Now the dual clutch was introduced with this model, the 991.1, and there's no manual option. So that was a big point of discussion. There is no longer a manual option for the 991.1 model. People were so 
up in arms about that decision such that the manual options was then provided for the 991.2 model range. So the model after this, which is still a 991, but a 0.2, that has the manual option and the 992.1 also has the manual option along with the PDK dual clutch option. So just gonna take you for, for a walk around of this particular 2013 991.1 model 911 GT3. So obviously it's white on black, so it's got black interior, like an ice white exterior. There's certain sacrificial parts on this car that was designed into, into the model range um, because of it being quite low. So for example, the rear diffuser, this is a sacrificial part that can be easily replaced. You've got gray wheels. This has got steel, so it hasn't got the carbon ceramics. This has got steels, which actually bite very well and work, and work very well. Walking around, and um, this particular car also has some PPF on it as well, which you can see denoted by the PPF across on the actual um, door mirrors. When looking at the brakes, of course, you can denote that they're steels from the, from the point of fact that they're coloured red. The carbon ceramics, the PCCBs, actually have yellow coloured calipers. Um, more sacrificial parts, you have this front splitter section. This is very low. This, this particular car does have lift, but that is susceptible to scraping and again, is quite easily replaced. So it's not carbon, so it doesn't cost a hell of a lot to replace. Again, this is Porsche, not Ferrari. Um, going round now to the inside of the car, this car doesn't have the club sport pack, so it doesn't have the roll cage in the back, so it doesn't have a load of steel, so that makes it a lot more usable from the respect of storage space. You've got a lot of room here where you can put storage in. This car also has the red surrounds on all the dials, which looks really cool in this particular model, really offsets well against the black leather. You have Alcantara on the center of the seats. You have the GC3 etched or labeled into the rear seat headrest. These are also the comfort seats, of course. These aren't the bucket seats. The bucket seats are quite extreme in the, in the Porsche GT3 range. Also, this car has what's called the Sports Chrono Pack. Now, the, way, the key way to decide that, and the, and the main benefit of that, is you actually have a clock and the stop, which can be used as a stopwatch, in the center of the dashboard. As I've already detailed, this car is PDK. The 991.1 didn't have a manual option. So you've got the PDK paddles here, um, denoted by also the PDK gear lever. You move it through the different drive options with the PDK gear lever. Um, getting onto the actual center console, you've got all your main options down here on buttons, which is really good to see. I really like the fact, as you know, I'm not too keen on these electro electronic screens having all the options set in there. Climate control is controlled through these buttons where you up it down and set it into auto on the climate control. And with regards to switching the exhaust valves in and out to put into what's called sports exhaust mode, you use this sports button and you switch on the sports PASM mode with this button and you put it into PDK faster sport shift with this button. So all these options nicely available there to hand when you're driving along. So it makes it nice and easy. You're not distracted from driving the car. So let's get the car out on the road and see how it drives. So guys, driving the 991.1 GT3. First impressions, what an awesome car. I've driven this for a, for a while now, so I'm not just saying that impetuously. This thing, screams race car i've got to get myself one of these got to get myself one of these just listen to this guys <laughs> To the road it changes gear like you wouldn't believe like an in an instant and this is a 2013 car at some point in the future guys a 911 gt3 is coming to the channel i can bloody assure you of that <laughs> friggin love it absolutely love it thanks very much to the owner for for lending me this car we've actually had it for two days now it's very very kind of you really really appreciate it this car is is very very warm we've warmed it up driven it very carefully to warm it up so if guys if you're happy for me to review your car on the channel please drop me drop me a comment in this video below and um, I'll hook up with you because we need to add more cars to our schedule for this year <laughs> So 
know guys, I'm getting carried away with a bloody car now. I've got to think about what I, what I need to say. So this is the 991.1 3.8 litre GT3. This is a 2013 model. The 991.1 has 475 brake horsepower, 320 foot pound, 324 pound foot of torque, accelerates from 0 to 62 in 3.5 seconds, and has a top speed V max of 195 miles, 195 miles an hour. This car is a car of firsts. It's the first car to have electric non-hydraulic steering. It's the first car to have rear wheel steering. It's the first GT3 to have a PDK only option. No manual option was proffered for the 991.1. And it's the first GT product to be a non-Metzger derived engine. So this, this engine is based on the Carrera S and it's a blueprinted version of that. The engine has been tinkered with to allow it to be more performant than the standard, um, than the standard 911 production engines. It, for example, it's got titanium comrades, um, case hardened crankshaft, and lightened pistons. So we're just turning round here, guys, so we can go back along um, a clean section of road, a non-busy section of road. And you can feel the rear wheel steering, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you can feel the rear wheel steering work working here because the rear wheels are turning in the opposite direction at this speed uh, to the front wheels. And it definitely shortens the wheelbase. It definitely makes it more maneuverable. I mean, this thing turns on a, turns on a coin. With regards to the electric steering, so this is non-hydraulic steering. This is electric-based steering. The first, nine, the first 911 GT3 to have electric only steering. I'll be honest with you guys, you can't tell. You can feel everything in the road. And this is the first time I've ever truly driven a car where I fully understand when people say you can feel the, the whole texture of the road through the steering wheel. With this car, you truly can. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Because the suspension is quite firm, you have to, you find yourself avoiding any sort of pit holes in the road. I mean, that's you know what you should do in this sort of car anyway. Um, but it does jolt the suspension. It is quite firm in that basis, and of course, it does jar the steering wheel if if, if you if you hit quite a divot in the road. And with this GT3, you don't feel any of that 911 lightness. Remember, guys, you've got the engine, the full mass of the engine, out on the rear axle. You just don't feel that. It turns on a coin. It turns in very sharply. It weights up nicely on the steering. It doesn't feel loose. There's no airy fairiness about the steering at all. Very direct. The speed of the steering is definitely slower when I compare it to the Ferraris, especially the 458. The steering is a lot faster in the 458. By that I mean that for the amount of percentage of turn that you put in the steering wheel, you get less turn on the wheels when compared with um, one of the, you know, a lot of the Ferrari supercars. So for example here, I'm having to I can just about keep my hands on the steering wheel there to turn sharp right, a 90 degree turn to the right. Whereas in a 458, you'd have to turn the steering wheel a lot less. That's not, less, that's not a bad thing, because the steering in the 458 is a bit too fast in my opinion anyway. So this, I would say that this is about right. With regards to the rear wheel steering, it operates in an interesting manner. It's, it only operates with a two degree deflection and, it opposite, and the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to the front wheels when you're traveling at speeds below 50 kilometers per hour. At speeds above 50 kilometers per hour, it'll turn in a two, G, two degree maximum deflection um, in the same direction as the front wheels. So that has the effect of below 50 miles, 50 kilometers per hour, has the effect of shortening the wheelbase of the car. When you're driving at speeds over 50 clicks, you've got the benefit of the rear wheels turning in the same direction, so that lengthens the wheelbase of the car and provides more stability. Just try and get past this tractor jib here. This thing overtakes anything so easily. So the Metzger lineage ended with a 997.2 GT3 4.4 litre RS. Why did it end there? Well, for, their, for their whatever reasons, for their infinite reasons, Porsche decided that it could end developing the development of engines based on the Metzger template, and they were going to move forward with a blueprinted version of the Carrera S engine for the GT3 products. Unfortunately, what that meant is that the, the first engines that were provided for the 991.1 GT3 
which were the Don Metzger, first to, to receive the Don Metzger engines, are the MA175 series. And the E0 was the first definitive model number for the particular engine. So MA175 E0, and those engines had problems, such that Porsche noted this because they were getting a lot of failures, engine failures. And what Porsche did was they did a recall. In effect, they told Porsche owners to stop driving their GT3s and the cars were brought in for an engine replacement. And the engines that they were replaced with was an E1 series. Now, because the E series engines hadn't been driven for any particular duration, they hadn't been able to find out if there was any other design flaws with the engine. And unfortunately there were. So they noticed some issues with regards to oil starvation at the top end. So you get additional cam load wear and issues with the followers, the cam followers. That was partly due to oil starvation and also because of um, the case hardening not being um, sufficient enough on those particular items, on those, on those particular cam loads and, and the cam followers. Now with regards to the E0 series engines, the failures were with regards to um, the bolts on the comrods losing their torque, so in effect undoing. And what that meant was that the comrod connects the piston to the crankshaft. So if, if the comrod comes loose from the crankshaft, the bloody comrods could smash through the crankcase and that literally what was happening. And of course you get loss of oil by the oil going through the crankshaft, notwithstanding you've lost the piston. <laughs> so, so instead of having a, a, a six cylinder boxer engine, you're running on five cylinders with, with one of the comrods smashed through the side of the crankcase. Um, and of course you get loss of oil and, it, and there were issues with fire with that because I guess the oil was splurting out and it was catching fire on the exhaust system. So you had the situation there where the E1 series engines with this, with this um, oil starvation and case hardening problems, just the tank can just went past, um, you had the oil starvation problem. So that, called, that, that required necessity for some of those E1 series engines. It was, just, it was only a small amount, but there was, there was the need for some of those E1 series engines to be recalled as well. And then whichever engine was in development, um, either the F or the G, the next one in development, that was what was put into those cars. So if you're looking at purchasing a 991.1, don't worry too much if the engine has been swapped out and you've got an F or a G series engine in there, it's fine. In fact, 991.1 GT3s that have a G series engine, I believe they're more sought after and more valuable purely because they've got all enhancement, there's no issues. It wasn't all the E0 series engines that had a, had a fault, although I believe that most of them were recalled. Porsche did a great thing. They extended the warranty to 10 years or 120,000 miles. That meant that in effect, you were gonna have that problem within that time frame for sure if your engine was gonna have, have the issues. Therefore, you could bring the car back in, they would analyze the car and they would swap the engine out for you. So, no bliss of blade really. So for me, you know, knowing that information, as long as the car is within that 10 year time frame and it's definitely gonna be under 120,000 miles, almost certainly, then, no fears, you know, Porsche have, have kept true to their word and they've been swapping the engines out. So great kudos to Porsche for doing that. Notwithstanding, of course, you could argue the point that there shouldn't have been that design flaw in the first place, but you know, these things happen. infinite wisdom Porsche decided much like Ferrari did with the 458 there's no manual option profit with the 458 they decided that they would stop providing the option of a manual gearbox with the GT3 series with the 991.1 so the 997.2 was perceivably gonna be the last car that had the, the option with a manual gearbox there was a lot of backlash on that and Porsche did listen to its owners and they did go back on their word and they then decided to provide the manual option from the 991.2 onwards. So the 991.2 and the 992.1 do have the ability to have manual gearboxes, so they could option manual gearboxes. Do I miss having a manual gearbox? Now I'm used to having um, a, an old, a dual clutch gearbox in my 458, so for me personally, it wouldn't be a problem. And you've seen how this gearbox performs, and it's not even in the faster sport mode, which we'll switch it into in, min in a minute. No issues whatsoever. Yes, it removes a bit of interaction with the car. Yes, you're not changing the gearbox manually, but this gearbox is a dream. Yes, again, it's not as 
interactive and not as sensual as, as a Ferrari gearbox in that you don't get that jolt so much, although you do get more of that jolt when you're driving in sport. Um, it's just seamless, I mean, it's just fast. And it, it, it freaking changes gear bloody quickly. You know, there's no issue whatsoever with cars, it's, it's changed gear. And of course the benefits of a dual clutch system is it's a wet dual clutch, so the plates are wet, so they're in oil all the time. So almost always the, the dual clutch plates will outlast your ownership of the car. <laughs> on the gearbox they're attached to the steering wheel that is good and bad in my opinion they're small so they could do with being a little bit bigger in my opinion but if you're using your hands at 10 to 2 which is how you should be driving these cars which is how I've got my hands at the moment then it's fine easily accessible no problems whatsoever the paddles themselves when you interact with them not a great feeling I much prefer you get that little click that micro switch click that you get with the Ferraris it's more definitive you have to push these fairly robustly to change gear. I don't know if you can hear that sound. It's just not as pleasant. It's just not as it's not as sensual as it is in the Ferrari. Again, German engineering, they don't design things necessarily to be sensual, they design them to be functional. So from that respect, yeah, they're very functional, but they lend themselves to hand quite easily, um, no problems whatsoever, um, very functional. And the gearbox is a dream. A yes, as, as I've said before, not essential as a Ferrari gearbox, um, but definitely changes gear faster than the 458, for example, using that as a comparison. And I would say changes gear faster in this 991.1, which is a 2013 car, remember guys. I would say it changes gear comparable to um, a 488, probably comparable to an F8. I wouldn't say that an F8 changes gear much faster than this. I'm just toodling along now because I'm stuck in traffic on this road. And I've got it in seventh gear, right? So people talk about there not being enough torque in these GT products, in these GT3s. I've got it now in sixth gear, um, cut cars driving, turning off, etc. And I'll put my foot down. Now this car has 325, now this car has 324 pound foot of torque. No issues whatsoever with the torque. You punch it down a couple of gears, and you get this. This is a dream all day driver. The only thing, that detracts it from an everyday daily driver is that the suspension is firm. You can't get away from that, the suspension is firm. And you really need to keep both hands on the steering wheel when you're driving at any sort of pace because the steering will be pulled when you, when you, when you hit certain nooks and crannies in the road. So you've got to be careful of that aspect. But hell guys, it's a bloody GT3. What do you expect? I would daily drive I would daily drive a GT3, no problem whatsoever. This car has a comfort seat, so it hasn't got a bucket seat. So I'd say that the bucket seats probably are, you know, they're well known to be quite aggressive. I haven't actually sat in the bucket seats and driven a GT product with the bucket seats. I would say these, these comfort seats are lovely. And for me, very comfortable. They support me very well across the, 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 um, the lower shoulder sections, across my kidneys, uh, which is where you need to be supported when you're, when you're moving aggressively side to side, when you're, you're, when you're pushing on in a, in a product like, when you're pushing on in a car like this. No problems whatsoever with the seats. The, the seat is adjustable um, fore and aft manually. With regards to the, the rear section of the seat, you can move it forwards and backwards um, electronically. So you've got adjustments down by the seat. No problems whatsoever with your tool getting into these GT products, unless you're like six foot six or something and all your height is in your upper body. But I've got plenty of leg room. The seat can go back loads further than I've got it back at the moment. And I've got plenty of head height and the seat is eminently adjustable and especially with the steering, you can get yourself in a perfect driving position.
with the PDK Sport option selected. So this means that the gearbox will hold on to the gears more aggressively when in auto mode. Um, we'll hold on to gears longer and it will be more aggressive in, in hammering the gears in. I can already sense that it's changing gears a little bit more aggressively in this sport, in the PDK Sport mode. Yeah, definitely. The downshifts are a lot more aggressive and the upshifts are a lot more aggressive. You feel that? Feel that fun? gearboxes but there it's you know obviously gives you that supercar feel it's all designed to feel like a supercar to look like a supercar so it's very extrovert in that approach now comparing that to the GT3 the GT3 goes under the wire you look at it and yeah you can tell it's a special car but it doesn't scream supercar it doesn't give you that sensibility when you when you're walking up to the car when you get into the car you start coming towards thinking oh this is something a bit more special with the seats hug you the way you set up your driving position um, you start thinking okay this is this is possibly something special notwithstanding it's got a wacky wacky great wing on the back if you if you're driving a non-touring version and then you drive the thing and it screams race car you can't get away from it instantly you drive this thing it screams race car the way it holds the road its firmness, its agility, its maneuverability, the speed of the thing, the way it picks up speed, the sound of it. This flat six boxer engine, guys, just listen to the planet. It's bloody awesome. Sounds absolutely incredible. The induction sounds you get coming through the cabin from the rear. Remember, this engine is hung right over the back onto the rear axle. Now, yes, the cars, the engines are moved forward more and lower to get a better, a better weight distribution nowadays. So they're not as rearward facing as they used to be, but potentially it's still over the rear axle. And obviously that provides for great traction capabilities when you're driving out of corners and such like. Talk about ease of overtaking, bloody hell. I would say, and I don't say this lightly, I would say driving around the Brecon Beacons, this car would pee all over my 458. And don't get me wrong guys, I'm not, you know, 458 guys, don't get hated on me. I love my 458, I wouldn't swap out my 458 for a GT product but I'd certainly have one of these in addition to something like a 458 in the garage as a daily driver, use this as a daily driver. This is like a scalpel. If you, if you think about the 458 as an extrovert, as a bit of a show pony, I would say that the GT3 is a scalpel. It cuts through and is functional in its capability. Typical German capability, typical German functionality. No messing around, it does the business and without a doubt it does the business bloody love it absolutely love it i know i've said that a few times guys but this is freaking awesome everything about this car freaking race car 
awesome. The brakes, even though they're stills and not the PCCBs, bloody awesome too. Great paint and great pedal feel on the brakes as well. They pull you right down. No ranting from the interior. You've got the usual PCM system, uh, which is from the legacy outgoing system, so that's a bit outdated. We currently got it on map mode at the moment. And yeah, that's that's outdated. I've always wanted to upshift earlier than than um, than I think than, than I think I need to because you just can't believe that this car's got more to give when it's still climbing acceleration. of this car this car would be awesome on a rally this car would have been awesome to take on the mod ball rally that we did last year introvert with regards to Ferraris it provides a promise of something special when you sit in the car when you get in the cabin and as soon as you start driving away it provides on that promise it delivers that on that promise and provides that scalpel capability and functionality that scalpel track mode functionality it just delivers that in spades so on that note I'm going to close out the video now take some time to calm myself down thanks a lot to Yona again for, for giving us this time to drive the car really really appreciate it very very kind of the owner if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up give it a like very very important to our channel and it's it going to provide us the capability to drive more cars like this and bring this sort of content to the channel for you guys thanks a lot for watching guys if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing it's free to do so it doesn't cost you anything and you can unsubscribe anytime you want please really seriously think about subscribing guys we have around 93 percent of our viewers that aren't subscribed at the moment if we could just convert some of you over to being subscribed it really help us with the youtube algorithm thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video